But I'd left school and gone to London, mm. just in time for the war. Yeah. We hoped it wouldn't happen. Mm. So I was there through the war years. And you didn't leave, no? No. And what were you working at? Typing. And who were you typing for? I worked for the Northern Ireland government. They thought, well, when I went in looking for a job mm. to the government office, she said, oh, I have just the job for an Irish girl. She didn't know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, where was that office? In, in Coxburg Street. It's uh, off Trafalgar Square. And how much a week were you getting paid? Sorry? How much were you getting paid? Oh, Lord. That was, uh, I think it was less than two pounds. It just about paid, paid my fares. And there was very little to eat at the time anyway. But you could get plenty of bread. Mm. Plenty of bread, yeah? Plenty of bread. Rather nasty looking stuff. Ten pence worth of meat. And uh, how much would that buy that time? Uh, one shop. One shop. Mm. And how often That's would you have a shop? For the week, one shop. Yeah, one shop. And there'd be an egg now and again. Yeah. But invariably, we didn't seem to get this egg. I don't know why, why it was. But we, we, we didn't get the egg. But what would you have for breakfast now that time? Toast, I think. Toast, yeah. And lunch? Uh, lunch. We had lunch out, of course, so that we didn't have to tackle our rations okay. for the lunch. And what would you eat? I think it was something horrible anyway. <laughs> I, I hated the food. In England? At the time. At the war, yeah, yeah. At the war time. Yeah. Yeah. And what would you have in the evening time then? I'd bring home the bread. Yeah. Butter, we got two ounces for the week. The week, yeah. That's that size. Uh, and I couldn't eat mud. If I had to eat mud, I used to toast it. For so it wasn't, didn't taste as bad. <laughs> Oh, the food was, was diabolical. It was awful. And were you hungry? No, I don't Can't know. remember being hungry, no? No. No, no, no. Um, I think we had just about enough to keep us going. Mm. And were people thin that time, were they? Thin? Were people slim? I, I don't remember mm. fat being any, but I was six stone three. <laughs> That's and thin. Yeah, and then I lost the three pounds. I went down to six. I didn't feel great when I was six stone. But you probably didn't, you were probably weak. And that was during the war? Yeah. So you were hungry then, obviously you must have been hungry and undernourished. And... Well, I, I never wanted a lot to yeah. eat. Yeah, yeah. And not, you did? That's not the sort of stuff we could get <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. No, ours was a serious problem. And after secondary school, what did you do after secondary school? Uh, I, I, I was, oh yes, when I was, um, oh, whatever, when I was in the Northern Ireland government office, I decided that, that I wanted to get with grown-ups. Yeah. I'd been, oh yes, the nuns wanted me to teach mm. and I was sent to one of their convents and I, I didn't really like teaching. Mm. I discovered much later in life when I was guiding that I liked teaching grown-ups mm. but I didn't, I had, the little kids were lovely and I didn't mind them jumping off desks and things like that. But the, the I, I wanted to get with grown up yeah. at last, and so I took a, t a secretary of course mm. in London. In London, can you remember the college? 
Well, it was the convent where I was oh, the convent. working. They were doing the lot then, they were. And they were, they did an evening course. Mm. Secretary, Okay. So I did that. And what, what, what year was that? What age were you then? That was about 1940. No, it was during the war. Well, it would be, yeah, that's right, yeah. And then, uh, well, of course, we had a whale of a time during the war. I mean, all these thousands of fellows coming into London, uh, all they wanted was to be seen with a girl, especially <laughs> the Americans. They wouldn't go to a football match without a girl. Would they not? No. No, oh, no. No, wouldn't be right. And were you taken out by many of them? Yourself? I had a few. Battles. You had a few, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, you know, you'd go, well, we belonged to a club, the Overseas Club, as it was called. And you could eat there and dance there. Mm. And invariably, when we were sitting down at the table, the Yanks would come over. They never hesitated mm. to. And uh, can we join you? Mm. And then if you had someone to dance with. I did make friends with one chap. He got married just before he came over. And uh, he said there wasn't a single man on the ship coming from America. These were the men who were coming to join the army mm. and the various forces. Uh, they were all married, but they didn't admit to it. But my friend did. Uh, in, uh, so I was friendly with him till he was killed. Oh, he was killed, was he? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. And where was he killed? Over oh, France. In France, yeah. yeah. And did you get a word that he was killed? Were you told he was killed? No, no I didn't find out until a, a few weeks later. Few weeks. But one of his friends uh, let me know. Mm. And were you upset? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. I mean, not that it would be, he wasn't a boyfriend or anything. But he was a good friend. Good friend, okay. And the, the Yanks were very generous. Mm. And they thought we were starving. So. Well, were they right? <laughs> <laughs> so they, they made up for that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And uh, what was it like during the war there? Was, did you, during the war, did you, were you around when there were bombs falling? Oh, Lord, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Did you see any falling? But London is a big place. Yeah. And they could be bombing over there, you mm. know, and it wouldn't be affecting them, but we'd hear the mm. gunfire. We knew it was on there. And the other hand, it could be down the road, because we were near, I lived in Chelsea at that time, which was lovely, but it was on the river, which was a fine trail for the bombers. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And did you actually see a bomb? Did you see any bomb going off? Well, I was going home from, uh, from not work, I think, one evening, and uh, the sirens went, and I stood in a doorway, uh, and there was a bomb fell. And my back was hurting. No. A policeman put his arm round me, but I'm down here, and he was up there, <laughs> and it hurt like hell. And uh, <laughs> I couldn't say, don't do that for God's sake. Really? <laughs> but he took me to the hospital, and uh, they dressed the wound. I was up. But then another time I was hurt, and I was six weeks in hospital. And what, what injuries did you have? Uh, no, I was, I think it was my back. Your back again, yeah? Yeah. yeah? yeah. And were you fearful? Were you afraid of bombs? And At the time, but 
I and I called myself a coward mm. always, but I wasn't. I was amazed. You weren't afraid, no. I wasn't afraid, and as long as Paddy was with me, I didn't like him to be in another part of London because I I thought I would protect him. Yeah, and Paddy was your brother, was he? Yes. He was your brother, eh? okay. Yes. And when did you get married then? Well, then I was home on leave, mm -hmm. half, less than halfway through the war, and I, my friend Grace Clampett, who died since, of course, she said, oh, I have a gorgeous fellow for you. Uh, he's got, he wants to take you to the dance. It was in Westport House. Okay. And the new Lord Sligo wanted to get it, to know his people, people. Um, more than they'd ever been known, because he was already dying of, of, of what do you call emphysema, when they drink too much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so he, he got a conscience about it, so he was having this dance. Anyway, I said, how do you know, how does he know he wants to take me to the dance? Because you told him. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I met your man. What was his name? Uh, John Cusick. John Cusick. From where? From... Which street? Castle Vast. Castle Vast, okay. <laughs> and, uh, oh, he was all suntan. He was home from South Africa. Okay. He, he was in the regular Navy. Uh, had been since he was 16. And uh, so, uh, you know, he knew what he was talking about. Mm. Uh, and it was lovely, I thought. Mm. So that... It developed from there. Developed. Yeah. And we got married. And... In where? In Liverpool. Liverpool, yeah, okay. He was in for two days. And I left the job. Well, I, I said I had a migraine, but they knew I suffered from migraine. Yeah. And we were married the next day on the, on the docks. On the docks? On the docks. He left first thing in the morning, and I went back to London and the bombs. And when did you see him again then? Well, Along he was with the away, yeah. Atlantic convoys at the time. Okay. Uh, which meant he was into Liverpool about every two months. Not too bad, yeah? So, yeah, I was lucky. That was a dangerous business, wasn't it? It was dangerous, his job. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, very. Mm. Uh, they called them the uh, Western Approaches, which mm. sounds lovely, but they were very dangerous approaches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Around the, the war wasn't that far from up there. Mm. And uh, when did he quit then? When did he give up the Navy? Well, uh, well he was in for 14 years. Oh, was he, yeah? He was. was he in after the war, yeah? And, oh, yes, yeah, yeah. and before the war. Yeah. He joined in 1934. 34, yeah. Yes. So he was already in the Navy for five years before the war. Okay. And he spent the first 10 years at war. Ten years? He, as a youngster, they went out to this it was, where they were, Palestine, the Palestine trouble mm. was on. They were ordered out to Palestine to monitor the war for, mm. the, uh, for the government in England. Okay, yeah. And they went from there to Spain, to Gibraltar, to keep an eye on the Spanish Civil War, and they regularly visited Spain. Mm. Uh, they, they used to take food with them because the Spanish were starving. <laughs> At least we got our rations, mm. which meant we didn't quite starve. <laughs> Not that you'd want to eat what you got, but. And how did you manage when he was away then? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. oh yes. Oh, I was crazy about him. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And I think he was the same. And he told me at the end, when we were 60 years married, that the last 10 years were the best. Well, that was nice to hear that. Yeah. Well, the nice to hear that, yeah. yeah. And when did he die then? Um, 2004. 2004. And he was 86. Yeah, yeah, well, he got a good life, good long life. We did. Yeah, he got a good long but life together. it's not the same one they've got. Is it not? Well, it's not, you know. You'd be used to them they're, they're all the time, you know, yeah. Uh, uh, and, you, and did you come home to Ireland then? Did we come? Yeah. Um, did he work in England for a while then, did he? Oh, he did. Yeah. Yes. What did he work at then? Uh, well, <laughs> he worked in a bar at night yeah. to make some extra money. Yeah. And he trained as a uh, made glass things. Oh, glass glass blower, glass, glass blower, yeah, blower, yeah, okay. Uh, that was his training. The, uh, England was in a pretty pretty bad way after the war. 